Hey guys, and welcome to this Mask AI Masterclass. I'm Ben from Ben's Guide, and I'm really excited to guide you through this step-by-step -step process showing you how to use the Mask AI tool and the tools inside the Mask section. Now, what is Mask AI or what is masking? If you're new to this, basically you can mask or select a certain part of your photo to edit without affecting the rest of the photo. This means if you want to brighten a sky, you can brighten it on its own, and then you don't brighten anywhere else in the image. This is going to be really exciting for a lot of people because it means Luminar Neo is going to be more powerful, giving you more variety and choices. It's also going to significantly speed up your workflow and editing time. So this is one of the tools inside Luminar Neo I am really excited about, and I'm glad I can bring this video to you today. I don't want to waffle too much longer. I just want to show you guys how it works, show you the tools inside it, and most importantly, show you how it benefits you. So if you click inside the edit tab, you'll find on the right hand side, you've got your tools. Now Luminar has actually decided to put the mask tab inside every single one of the tools. So if I click on develop here, I can see that I come down and there's the mask tab. It's going to be the same for every single one of the tools. You can see it's got it. When you actually use the mask AI tool by clicking on it, you'll notice that you will open up some options. You've got a brush option, a linear gradient, radial gradient, and AI mask. I think it's important to go through each one of these tools and then really show you how you can use them and what you can use them for. On the left hand side, you can see this image. I've taken this photo doing some product photography for an Australian client. And the original photo is a little underexposed. I've taken it at night time, so I want to make a little change to it. The first tool, the brush tool, is going to be really good for actually making a change to a certain area of the photo. So let's show you how this works. If I click on the brush tool, you're going to see that it opens up this here, and then I can choose to paint or erase. Now, painting is going to paint on, as you can see here, a mask over the area that I want it to cover. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to make a real quick paint over here with this mask, just keeping it nice and quick. And then the area that I actually paint over right here is going to be the area that I can actually change or make enhancements to. Now I've done this really quick just for the purpose of this video. I'd actually take a little bit more time and be a bit more cautious if I was doing this for the proper job. Now, what you can see here is you can see there's a little section here where I've gone outside. Now what you can do is you can now go into the erase of the brush tool right here and then you can actually paint away that effect. By doing that, all you've got to do is just click on the image and then start painting away just that little area where I went over there. Okay, now you can see that this mask has been applied to this area. Now we can jump into the adjustments and I can start making the adjustments just to this area in the image. So I want to start by adding the exposure, pushing that up a little bit to make it brighter. Then I want to add a bit more contrast, just a little bit more. Then I think a nice change would be actually to push the temperature up to match the kind of color of the light. So it looks a bit more orange and the vibrancy as well. Now, if I look at the before and after, you can see I've just changed and edited that one part of the image. This is really what the mask brush tool is particularly good for. It means that you can just paint over little areas in your image and then just affect those only. And if you do make a little mistake, like I did, then you could just go onto the erase tool here and then just paint it away. You have a control over the size of the brush, the softness, if you want it to be a nice soft brush or a hard brush, and of course the strength of the effect right here. So that's what the brush tool inside the mask tool is really good for. The next tool inside the mask tools can be found actually just by clicking into the masking section and it's underneath the brush. You've got linear gradient. 
clicking on that, you can see that all you have to do is click and drag to draw a gradient. The instructions are right there. So then we're going to drag up and then you can see this nice fade or blend between where the gradient is at its strongest and where it goes to its weakest. So strongest here and then it gradually feathers off going over there. Now the reason I'm applying this gradient here or the adjustment just to this platform is because I want the attention of the viewer to be on the mountains and not on this platform here. So now I've got this mask and I've chose the area where I want to apply the effect. I can now go into adjustments and then I can go exposure and then I can just bring this down to darken it out. And now looking at the before and the after, you can see this is the before, this is the after. Now when using the linear gradient tool is particularly good for kind of shifting people's attention like this in the image, but you can use it for anything. You can even use it as an ND filter in the sky. If you don't know what that is, it means you can darken down the sky if it's too bright and your highlights are just almost blown out. It's particularly good for doing that. Here is an image which I've actually used and edit for in my next video, which is coming in the next few days. If you wanna learn all about how to combine the mask tool with the other AI tools inside Luminar Neo to get some incredible results, then you're gonna absolutely love that video. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when this video comes live in a few days. Right now though, I'm gonna show you the next tool. Inside the Enhance tab, we're gonna click on the Masking tool, go down to Radial Gradient, and this is actually gonna be very similar to the Linear Gradient tool, but in instead of having a straight line, it's actually going to have this round effect. Now you can double click on the areas, and you can move it around and change the shape and size of it to your want or to your need. Now, with all of these tools, you can actually do two things. You can have the effect where it's showing right now, wherever the red is in the image, or you can go ahead and invert it, which means it will actually affect the inside of the radial gradient here instead of the outside, which it was affecting before. Now, I'm just gonna drag this down to make it fit more of the woman, and then we're just gonna apply the effect to the lady right here. There we go. About there should be all right just for this one. Now for the adjustments, all I want to do here is enhance the woman so she's the focal point in the image a little bit more. So I'm just going to pull up the enhance tab and you can see the effect is just applied to the woman right here. So it's really showing you another shape or another option for your masking, which will work for certain edits depending on which edits you want to use it for. Inside Luminar News AI Engine, you now have the Mask AI tool. This is the one I'm most excited about. This is able to look into your photos and discover what's in your scene. Now it can actually identify up to nine very common areas from your photos. Um, and some of these examples are things like transportation, humans, sky, water, flora, man-made ground, natural ground, and architecture. So looking at this photo now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just choose the mountains with the mask AI tool and I'd like to make just a change to those on their own. So I'd like to make a little bit more structure present in the mountains so that they just stand out a bit more. So I'm going to choose the structure tool. I'm going to go into the mask and then I'm going to choose mask AI. So I'm going to click on that. And then this is where the AI engine looks into your photo and it looks for what it can identify. Okay, so that's took about 10 seconds. And now you can see right here, there is some options which have popped up. You've got sky, architecture, mountains, and natural ground. So Luminar Neo has been able to identify these in the photo. So because I wanted to make a change to the mountains, what I can do now is click on this, which is a button, and then hopefully it will select the mountains. You can see that a selection now has actually been made around the mountains, which is really good, because if I was to actually try and do this myself, it would take a lot longer. Now, this is the first version of the tool, so there are a few issues now and then where it won't find everywhere on the mask that you want it to, 
But if you remember from earlier, we used the brush tool very easily to mask certain parts of the image and erase other parts which we didn't want. But first I need to be able to identify the mask. Below you have something called mask actions. Now if you can't actually see those, all you'll need to do is click the arrow down and then it's going to show you the options here inside the mask actions. Now I need to choose show because this is going to show me where the mask is. So I click show and then the mask is back. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and once again I'm just going to make a very quick edit to this so I don't take up too much of your time. So I want to just quickly erase away this here with a brush mask. And then I just want to quickly, very roughly paint in here the area of the mountains which it hasn't chosen as well as I wanted it to. There we go, and that has took me well, probably about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, of course, if I wanted to do this more, um, or should I say, wanted to do this better or more strictly, then it would take me about 30 seconds, maybe a bit longer. But now I can go into the adjustments and the structure adjustment that I wanted to make to the mountains, I can just make to the mountain area on their own. And now you can see by pushing that up, I've really made the mountains stand out in this image and they look absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, if I wanted to go ahead and make further changes, I could do that. So I could go into the develop tab, I could go into masking, AI mask, and then it's gonna identify the areas in the image like it did before, and then I could choose the sky. And then it's gonna mask the sky right here. I could make the changes with the brush, just painting these in if I wanted to. And then what I could do is I could go to the adjustments and I can make a change to the sky. So let's say I want to make it a bit darker or a bit lighter. I can do that or whatever change I want to do. I could change the temperature to make it warmer. This is really powerful because I can just pick areas in the photo and quickly mask whole areas. And then I can just make changes to them without editing other parts of the photo. Now we talked about these nine very common areas which you can use inside the mask AI. Let's see how this tool actually works for some of those. Let's start with this car here. Now this would come under the transportation option which you have inside mask AI. Now I wanna actually add a bit of structure to this as well just to really make the car pop out of the image. So I quickly go into mask, I go to AI mask and then it finds the car in the image hopefully. Okay, so it's identified the sky, the flora, transport which is going to be the car and main main ground now all i want to edit is this car i want to really make this car pop out the image so now what i do is i choose transport and then let's see how it looks and that's actually done a really good job of picking out the car there the mask is almost perfect so now i'm going to go into adjustments i'm going to push up the structure and i'm going to make this car look really fast and mean and like it pops right out the image and just add a bit of a boost to it inside structure as well. Now that car looks really nice now. Let's just have a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here's the after. Now what happens if I actually wanted to make another change to that car? Well, there is a great tool inside masking that you can do that. So I'll go into masking, I come back here, and then remember when we had a look at the mask actions a short time ago, you can click that open and then you can copy the mask that you've created. So I'll copy the mask, I click off structure, and let's say I want to add some contrast into the car now. I'll go into the develop tab where you find the contrast, go into masking, down to mask actions, and then paste in the mask. That now means that I've got the mask pasted into this tool, so I can now actually apply this tool just to this area as well. So I'll go to adjustments, push up the contrast, and then the contrast is applied to the car. So I've got that strong detail and that contrast to re really make it stand out as well. Now this is something which is really powerful as well, using the copy and paste tool to quickly copy your mask into different tools, enabling you to make changes, all kinds of changes to your photo. Now using the mask AI tool for me is a brilliant experience and I think it will be for you too. 
but let's just take another look at one of the options inside Mask AI. This time we're going to try and identify a human using the Mask AI tool and see how it works for them. Now once again we found human, flora, mountains, natural ground and man-made ground. So I'm going to select the human, hopefully it's done a good job. And there we go, it's actually selected the human absolutely perfectly. That's brilliant. That's actually done a really good job there. And now I can just enhance them to make them stand out in the image a little bit more. Now, of course, like I said, we can just go ahead again and then we can actually just copy the mask. So I'm just going to go to copy. And then I'm going to choose to make another change to the person. So maybe I want to just change the color of them a little bit, the vibrancy. So I'll go into mask. Click on mask actions and paste. And now I've got the mask paste into this tool. All I need to do then is just push up the vibrancy. And there you go. I've just made the vibrancy of the person stand out a little bit more in the image as well. Now we very briefly looked at the mask actions inside the mask tool, but they are really important to learn about. So let's have a quick look at these to show you what I mean. You've got show down here, which shows you where the mask is in the image. You've got paste, which we've also used, which you can copy and paste the image, sorry, copy and paste the mask into the tool, which means you can use it with that tool as well. And you've obviously got the copy to, to do that with. Now you've also got invert. Invert means that you can invert the mask, which means flip it outside of the selection that you've already got. So let's show you how that quickly works. So if we go into adjustments, I'm just going to click off this option here, the develop tab. And let's say that I just want to make the whole scene black and white. I'm going to go convert to black and white right here. Then I'm going to go into masking, down to mask actions, and I'm going to go and paint this effect just on the person right here. Now this is going to be a really, really quick paint here. It's going to look terrible. But I just want to show you how this tool works. There we go. And now you can see that actually what's happened here is just the person, because I've painted it, is, is applied here with this black and white kind of um, effect. Now what would happen is I go into the mask actions, I'd go invert, and you'll see that now what will happen is the mask will be applied to everything outside of the mask area that I'd painted. This is inverting the mask. So that can be a very powerful tool if you want to use it. Now clear, of course, is clearing the whole thing, which in this case is very good because that was a terrible quick selection just to show you. Finally, the last mask action you can use is fill. And this means it will fill the whole area with a mask or with that effect that you've applied, as you can see right there. So in this case, I'm just going to press clear to go back. And they are the mask actions. So using the mask actions along with the mask tools together, you can get some really powerful results. Now, what needs to be improved with a mask AI tool? Is it perfect? It's actually not perfect, but it's very good for a tool which is in version one, its first release. We should know by now if you own Luminar Neo that actually Skylum, the makers, are particularly good at bringing out new updates to enhance and improve their software. And this is what I expect from the Mask AI tool. I expect it to be improved. And I think some of these selections are going to be near perfect in the next three to six months with further updates. But time will tell. But apart from that, this is a brilliant tool, which I really think that you're going to benefit from. And I hope this video has showed you how to use the mask tool and really how you can start applying it to your edits. Remember to check out that video in the next couple of days, guys, if you're interested in learning how to use the mask AI tool along with all the tools inside Luminar Neo to get some really incredible edits. I can't wait to share that one with you. 
I want to thank you guys for watching this video and staying the course on it. Please hit that like button and whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.